Everyone and welcome to Eye to Eye. Dan Metzdorf has defied sky high odds. He's secured a place on the U.S. Army's elite sky jumping team, even after losing a leg in combat. Our Mark Strassman took a leap with this very inspirational soldier. We're on a routine night patrol, January 27, 2004. Just uh, just doing our job. Um, my uh, convoy, my squad was hit by a roadside bomb. Three of my soldiers were killed and uh, three of us were injured. I had a basically like a brick sized hole of where my knee was. Um, my leg was still attached. We were evac'd very quickly. The uh, soldiers that were left were um, very young, very um, inexperienced soldiers. This is their first time deployed and they reacted awesome. They, it was the best ever. I was, I was so proud of them. Went up to Baghdad, um, had my leg amputated there, uh, sent to uh, Germany, got stable, was sent to Walter Reed, stayed there for about a year, rehab, and then stayed on active duty. Um, I thought it was a joke at first. I was like, who is this guy? Does he know I got one leg? The Golden Knights are about a planes from over two miles above the Earth's surface. What are you kidding me right now? They, they accelerate their bodies from 120 to approximately 180 miles an hour. What? No, this, who is this? Is this one of my buddies? At first, since I didn't know exactly everything that the Golden Knights did, and at first I was like, oh, these guys, they comb their hair, they pass out stickers, they sign autographs. I could do this every day. Wow, I was, uh, I was far, very far from the truth. I was, I was listening to all the rumors on the street, basically. I came here and I was like, whoa, just to fly in that wind tunnel, you gotta be very fit. You, you gotta keep yourself in a high physical condition. And I was like, wow, I, I've gotta keep myself fit. All right, so I can do that, okay. Okay, this whole jumping thing, it's a lot harder than I thought, you know. Uh, since I was paratrooper with the 82nd, you, know, you jump out, static line pulls your parachutes, very easy. This, you've got to do a lot. And, and what you do can cause, or fail to do, can cause injury to yourself or a teammate. So you have to be very good at what you do. If life's not going to be hard, then why live it? You know, you, you always want that challenge. I didn't join the Army thinking, you know, it's going to be really easy, and uh, I'm going to catch rays, you know. I'm gonna, Hang out? No, no, that's, that's definitely not at all. I've always wanted that challenge, but bringing the prosthetic leg into the equation, I was like, hmm, how am I going to jump out of plane with this? How? And then I thought, well, so why should I think about it? I should just do it and take it out of the equation. So I just stopped thinking about it. I was like, hey, all I've got to do is fly my body as best of my ability, but I got the best training in the world. So it's very easy for me to not even think about my prosthetic, let it do whatever it does with, when the wind hits it, and just fly my body. And so it was, it was easy once I thought of it like that and not concentrated on the, uh, on the prosthetic limb. There's, there's a side of, of a lot of people, I think, who, who are facing a big challenge. Mm -hmm. um, you know, whether it's you return home to New Orleans right after Katrina or you, you start to look at your new life with a prosthetic, and that is... I'm gonna kick this things out. I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. All right. There, there's the romantic side of it, and then you know the romance wears off, and basically yes. you gotta roll up your sleeves, yeah, and really dig in. So what I'm asking is, day after day, the persistence that you need to um, have gotten this far, and, and what you hope to take you further. Like where's that come from? Like, well, I'm just like everybody else. Um, some people have bad hair days. Uh, obviously, I don't, but um, I have bad leg days. You know, so it's like you're like. Sometimes I get up, my leg's not feeling too good. I, I didn't, maybe I've walked too much or I started running on it again or, or maybe I did a jump where I might have hit it a little harder than I should have. And so I'll have like a bad leg day. But I just think to myself, I'm like, well, this is part of the package. This is part of my package that when I woke up in that hospital and I thought to myself and that doctor was basically yelling at me going, hey, you're going to have to fight to get better. You're going you're gonna to have to do it. We can do all that we can, but you you are going to have to do this. I was like, oh, well, oh, okay. I, I, I just accepted the total package. Everything that, that is involved with being a above the knee amputee, trying to stay on active duty and then staying on active duty and doing this job, I've already bought it. I've already bought that. So I, I, I just keep saying to myself, hey, Dan, you wanted this. You wanted to do it. That's why you have to keep doing it.